Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Amen, amen, amen. All right, all right. Already this morning, trying to get a little technical difficulties, but we're going to be all right. I hope everybody can hear me out there. Okay, not on not on the face Facebook. You can't see me. Okay, good morning. I see the people popping in. Good morning. If you can see me and hear me, okay. Let me know somebody out there, please. Good morning. We do not own the rights to this music. But I wanted to start this Monday morning with this anthem. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? I'm not showing. Okay, well, they they saying they can hear and see me. I, okay, all right, good morning, good Monday morning. Lord, deliver me. It's a beautiful Monday morning. We do not own the rights to this music. But this is our anthem for this morning. Deliver me from me. <laughs> Amen. What'd you say, Sister Reed? All right, all right. Okay, okay. Good morning, good morning. Come on in. I see you, Preston. Come on in, come on in. Come on in this morning. Good morning, good morning. We do not own the rights to this music. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Deliver me. Good morning, good morning. Come on in, tag somebody this morning. Good morning, Cheryl, I see you this morning. Good morning, good morning, Jasmine. Good morning, Barbara. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I see you, Nick. I see you, Nick. Good morning, good morning. Come on in this morning. Deliver me. Yes, yes, yes. All right, all right, all right. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. I see you, Rena. Good morning. Good morning, Daryl. I see you. I see you. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah, all the way from Virginia. God bless, hallelujah. Good morning, Trisha, I see you this morning. Yes, this is my exodus. Hey, I see you, Wilson. Good morning, good morning, I see you, Jerry. This is my exodus. This is my coming out, coming, going through. This is this is this is my coming out moment. This is my going through. I want to talk to some going through people this morning. Some people who have been through some things. Some people who have the have the wounds and the scars to, to authenticate their journey. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. Yes, indeed. I see you, Pastor Ferguson. Good morning, good morning, good morning. 
Good morning. Yes, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Denise, I see you. Good morning, Brenda. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. I see my brother is on this morning. Good morning, Landry, Landry, Landry. Good morning. Yes, indeed. All right, all right. Good Monday morning to everybody out there. I am glad to be here this morning. I am Reverend Willis Horn standing in for Bishop B.K. Stevens and co-pastor Stevens this morning. And um, it's a good morning. We, we've, all, we've all signed up on the wake up list this morning. We've all been blessed this morning. We've all been delivered once again this morning. His mercies are new every morning. His mercies are new every morning. So I just thank God once again to, to be with you and to share with you what God has, has put on my heart. I was I was sitting in I was sitting in church uh, yesterday and I was just looking around and it happened to be youth Sunday yesterday in church and I and I'm just looking around and I I looked at at, at the people, at the people in church. And um, uh, I realized how long I've been at Faith Hope. And I looked around and it took me back. It took me back a few years. Now, you know, I'm an old man already, but it took me back a few years when I would walk in the church. And I would see the the elders of the church. I would I would see uh, 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 Sister Parker, and I would see Mister Blue, and I would and I would see um, those people, uh, the elders. I, I remember Miss Beverly Williams. I remember Miss Yvonne, and I I remember all of those those saints that I would see in the church who were at that time to me the elders the elders of the, of the church. Uh, and, uh, and I looked around yesterday and I looked and I said, Oh my God, we the elders now. <laughs> we the elders now. And I saw all these children and, uh, <laughs> and there was one little kid. I, I, I didn't even know who he was, but he was sitting right behind me and he was just aggravating me just hit me on the back of the head and just, he didn't know who I was, but he was just wanting to play with me. And I was like, okay, little dude, who, who is your mama? Well, I'm about to tell her you. And so, so, uh, little Jackson, little Jackson, just, just, just messed with me yesterday. But I, I realized that as I looked around, even, even see, even, even Bishop, even Bishop, uh, uh in the beginning, uh, of faith hope when he when he got there he, he he wasn't one of the elders he was he was a he was a youngster coming in amongst a lot of elders and and so and so now now I look around and and we who who had these elders to to look up to and to and to uh kind of pave the way for us now we are those people we are those those people, we we are the elders, and 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 it and it kind of blessed me, and then it kind of reminded me of what an awesome responsibility it is to be in that position. And see, we we inadvertently find ourselves in that position, and and as as we as we get up on, on the wake up list every morning and. And as we go through, see, I want to talk to some people this morning who have been through some things. I was talking in Sunday school yesterday, and I made this statement, and, 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 and I hope it don't offend anybody out there, but I made this statement. 
and 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 I'm gonna tell you why I made this statement the way I did because I mean I've been around a long time. I'm I'm, I'm soon to be seventy, so I've been around a long time. I've been around church a long time, and the statement that I made was that I can't stand church folks. <laughs> Now, don't take nobody take that personal. But here's 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 the situation behind that. The situation behind that is that sometimes we forget or we don't want to recall where we came from and we get into a church setting and we act as if we have never been through anything. Come on, somebody help me this morning. We act as if. We have no history of our wilderness journey. We act as if we've been saved our entire life. And it's just not the case. And the Bible teaches us that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. See, the most, most of the time, and, and here's, here's the problem, most of the time, our testimony is heard from someone else who knew us back then. Ain't that so and so? Boy, we used to do. Uh, we used to, man. We used to cut up. That's the. And you talking about who? Huh? Oh no, huh? he ain't never done nothing. And so, and so, our testimonies don't, don't, don't avail us or avail to those that hear them the power that they should. You know why? Because we don't tell nobody. We don't want nobody, we don't want nobody to know. We don't want nobody to know. And see, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. The Bible teaches us, uh, 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 the scripture tells us he was wounded for our transgressions bruised for our iniquities and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. Now watch this, watch this, watch this. After the crucifixion, when Jesus appeared again to his disciples, here's what he did. He showed them the piercing in his side and the nail prints in his hand. He did that for a purpose. You know why? That's testimony. Listen, forget about what you see now because we can dress up a monkey and make him look cute. So forget about how you look and your Sunday clothes and your Sunday smile. Somebody needs to know about your wounds. Somebody needs to know about the struggles that you've been through. Somebody needs to know that you didn't just get here looking as good as you look, but you don't look like what you've been through. Come on, y'all gonna talk to me this morning? And so, and so that's why I made that statement because oftentimes we dress up the exterior to hide, listen, Anybody can put on a new suit. That don't make you a new person. Anybody can put on a new dress. That don't make you a new person. Anybody can get a haircut, get their hair done, and, and look the part. But the testimony, the testimony mm, is in the wounds. Listen, don't think that I just got here overnight. Listen, I got some scars in my body that lets you know I have been through a journey. God has delivered me through some things. I didn't just get here because I'm blessed and highly favored because that's what we like to say. Oh, well, what are you doing? I'm blessed and highly. Yes, you are. But you've been through some stuff. God allowed you, come on, somebody, to go through. <laughs> David said it after David went through all the shenanigans and, 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 and he penned the 23rd Psalms and, and one of the most significant uh, uh, pa passages in that Psalm is yea though I walk through 
the valley of the shadow of death. What is he saying? He's saying, through my journey, death was so close to me that I was standing in his shadow. Death was so close to me that I shouldn't be here today, but I'm here. But I got some receipts. I got some wounds. I got the piercing in my side. I got the, the nail prints in my hand. I have some things to authenticate my being here. That I had to go through some valleys and some shadows of death. <laughs> Come on, somebody. So, so listen, I just want to talk to you a little bit this morning. I got a couple scriptures uh, that I want to share with you. And then we just, we just going to have a conversation this morning. How about that? Is that good this morning? Everybody all right out there? Amen, 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 amen. So listen, listen, we, we, we've traveled some rough roads. And if we look in the rearview mirror mm -hmm. of our minds, then it, we, 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 we have to begin to thank and praise God. Because when we look back and see the wreckage that we came out of, almost unscathed, we have to thank God and wonder how I got over. My soul looks back and wonders hmm, how I got over. I, um, now this was years ago. I was probably about 28 years old. So, you know, that's been some years ago. And I was at a, I was at a Bible study. And I ran into a guy, I ran into a guy that I went to junior high school with. Now, he, he was a brainiac. He was a studious dude in the chess club and all that kind of stuff. Uh, he, he knew me, but, and I, I knew him, but we didn't run in the same circle because I was a street kid. You know, I was, a, I, was, I was a young thug. I was a thug in training. And uh, so I saw him at the Bible study and he recognized me before I recognized him. And he, he in shock looked at me. He said, Willis Horn. I said, yeah. He said, man, I thought you'd have been dead by now. Huh. Somebody, somebody ought to come in here this morning and 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 when I reflect upon that, I understood his sentiment concerning that. I understood what he was saying because of where I come from and because of the lifestyle that I was living. I was like David. I was going through the valley of the shadow of death and death was looming around me and I didn't even know it. But God, come on, somebody say, but God, <laughs> but God, listen, so we've been through, we've been through, uh, uh, look at, look at, uh, right quick, before I share with you other scriptures, Psalms, the, the 107th division of Psalms, most of you know it, and I just want to read the first couple passages. It says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let the redeemed <laughs> of the Lord say so. Y'all get that? I'm going to read it again. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Let the redeemed, any redeemed folk out there, of the Lord say so. Say what? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he had redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Listen, our testimony, 
God brought us out of some stuff, not for us to, to look back and forget and act like we ain't been through nothing, but to say what God has brought us out of. See, because everything that every one of you have been through, God, there's somebody around you that is going through right now. And some of them don't think that they can make it through. And so now God wants to use what you've been through to help them to get. We sitting around like we ain't never done nothing. We ain't never, you know, and then, then some of us are bold enough to even open our mouth and, and, and say that, well, I don't, you know, I don't know nothing about that. And then know that she was the, the, the biggest one in that circle. Come on, stop now. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, say so, say, somebody say so, come on, somebody say so, somebody, listen, the enemy of your soul wants to keep your mouth shut as to what he tried to do to you and couldn't, and so it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let me let me put a little twist on that. Remember, remember, remember we, used to, we was kids and, and, and you know, uh, uh, and we used to play the dozen. We talk about each other's mama and, 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 and we would talk about each other, you know, talk about what they wore and all that kind of stuff. And 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 and, and one of one of one of the, the the main phrases in your retort in your comeback when somebody when somebody said something about you, you would say so, and then you would hit them with your with your with your uh, reply, and they say something to you, you say so, with your mama this so, with your daddy this so. And so the enemy keeps trying to tell you that you're not who you are and tries to use what you've been through against you so that you'll keep your mouth shut and we need to say so. And the enemy will say, don't you remember when you was in the trap house and you say, so I'm not in that now. And God is utilizing what I've been through to help somebody who is going through. So let the redeemed of the Lord say, somebody ought to say so. Say so. <laughs> say so. So listen, I want to I want to draw your attention this morning to, to to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Deuteronomy chapter 8. We're going to look at a couple verses in Deuteronomy chapter 8. Come on, somebody say so. <laughs> Somebody say so. It don't matter what I was. It don't matter what where where, where 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 you saw me at before. What matters is where I am now. So, yeah, I used to do that. So, <laughs> it don't matter. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Somebody come on in here this morning. So, it doesn't matter. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. He showed the disciples the wounds that authenticated what he had been through. <laughs> they, they knew about the crucifixion, but now they had the receipts at the hand of Jesus. And he said, this hmm, is what I've been through. This lets you know I am who I am. This, and listen, our receipts, our validation of what God has done in our life is not the house that you live in, not the car that you drive, not the, not the, the, the money that you have in the bank. Those are not the authentication of God's goodness in your life. It is the wounds. It is the scars. It is the things that hurt you deeply or the authentication that God. Somebody better come in here this morning. It's the wounds. 
It's the scars. I've been through something. I've been through something. Uh, uh, what's that? Is that that State Farm commercial or something that come on TV? Said, said, uh, 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 I know a few things because I've seen a few things. I've been through some things. I've seen some things. I've experienced some things. I know what hurt feel like. I know what pain feel like. I know what disgrace feel like. I know what uh, uh, insecurity uh, feel like and low self-esteem feel like. I know what rejection feel like. I've been through some things. Not only do I have some emotional scars, I have some physical scars that I put myself in a position where, the, where my body, <laughs> my body bears witness to what I've been through. Somebody ought to look at their scars right now this morning whether they're emotional and physical and say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I got, I got some scars. I might have some bullet wounds, but guess what? The one that was supposed to take me out didn't take me out. Come on, talk to me this morning. I might have some, some cuts and some scrapes, but these are all the roadmaps, the evidence of what I've been through. Hey, so listen, Deuteronomy, <laughs> Lord have mercy, bless God this morning, Deuteronomy chapter 8, we're going to look at a few verses, then we're going to pray, and we're going to start our week off, is that all right? Bless God, bless God, listen, all the commandments, verse 1 of chapter 8 of Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy Deuteronomy is, is uh, the book uh, of the law. Deuteronomy is the book of the law. And, and really the name Deuteronomy means, you know, duo, do. Deuteronomy means the second law or, or, or the revision of the law or the, the reiteration of the law because during this time Moses had to come back and review with the people what God had already said. So Deuteronomy is the second law or the or the repeating of the law, the reviewing, the rehearsing of the law, all the commandments, verse one, chapter eight, Deuteronomy, which I command thee this day, shall ye observe to do. Y'all get that? Stop, stop right there. Stop right there. Don't even read no further. All these commandments, which I command thee this day, shall you observe to do. Here's the problem that we have, and here's the reason why these commandments had to be repeated to the children of Israel is because they didn't observe and do what God had commanded them to do. And the listen, here, here's one thing that we need to know and we need to understand. Anytime that God commands us to do something, it's not for God, it's for you. It is God looking out for you. Okay, let's finish reading the verse. All these commandments, which I, all these commandments, which I command thee to do this day, shall ye observe to do, that ye may live. <laughs> That you may live. That you, listen, God is not your, your spiritual party pooper. When God instructs you to do something, it's so that you can live, watch this, and multiply and go in 
and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Now here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. Moses is now speaking to a generation that were born in the wilderness and didn't come out of Egypt. Y'all better get this. He's speaking to a generation that were born during the wilderness journey who may not understand what Egypt was all about. See, Egypt, the, the ones who came out of Egypt were in captivity. Their freedom was in the wilderness. <laughs> Listen, sometimes the, 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 the path, the journey that we have to take to our deliverance goes through a wilderness. See, that's why, that's why, you know, one of the, one of the, the, the greatest, the greatest uh, 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 misnomers or, 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 or um, how can I say it? And, and, and I know people, because listen, when I was 21 years, I got, I got saved at about 20, 20 years old, 1972. And, 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 um, and the thing, the thing that was told to me then says, when you give your life to Christ, everything going to be all right. Boy, I like the sound of that. But guess what? When I said yes to Jesus, all hell broke loose in my life. I don't know about you. I don't know about you. Maybe it's been smooth selling. Maybe your whole Christian experience has been smooth selling. But see, because I was a faithful worker for the enemy. And so now the enemy was upset that now I wanted to change teams. I didn't want to, I didn't want to wear his uniform no more. And 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 he had he had gave me all this on the job training. And so now I was good at what I was doing for the enemy. And I was very proficient in what I was doing for the enemy. And so now the enemy was upset and so he attacked me on every hand with the things that I learned in the enemy's camp come on with the things that I learned in the enemy's camp and so now my life where it it, it wasn't as bad uh, uh, because I wasn't making no waves in the enemy camp, but now I was disrupting the order of the enemy camp and he, he, he didn't like that. And so he began to come up against me. Now watch this, watch this. We start off talking about us being the elders and the things that we have been through. Listen, the, 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 the children born in the wilderness didn't remember the captivity. The children born in the wilderness had a wilderness mentality. So now the, 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 the laws and the statues that he had that, that Moses had given to the people, he has to now rehearse them again in these wilderness children who have no idea what you're talking about. I had no idea what you're talking about. So he said, so that you can go in and possess the land with your father. He said, thou shall remember all the way which the Lord God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Why did we go through our wilderness experience? Why did God allow us to go through the wilderness experience if it wasn't to benefit us when we got into the land that he promised us. See, some of us have forgotten our wilderness experience. <clears throat> and now we just sit in the pews and we say amen and hallelujah. And then we look at the children. We look, <laughs> we look at the children 
that are, are, are running rampant around us and, and we, we don't understand why they're doing what they're doing. And listen, there are children. <laughs> They're our children. They're the offspring of our wilderness. Mm -hmm. And some of the things that stabilize you, they don't remember what you had to go through to get to where you are. And they don't know it because we don't tell them how we got where we are. And so that's why they say, well, oh, mama, you don't know nothing. Oh, daddy, you don't know nothing. Oh, grandma, you, you don't know nothing. You ain't, you ain't been through this. You don't understand. You, 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 you old. <laughs> you old and you, you, don't, you don't know what's going on. And, 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 and they need to know. We need to show them some receipts, y'all. Listen, how you think I got this? How you think I got this? How you think I, how do you think, do you think that this all just happened? I had to go through some things before you was here. And then when you got here, I had to go through some more things because you was here. Y'all ain't here. We had to go through some stuff. He said, thou shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Watch this. Watch this. To humble thee. To humble thee. See, see, sometimes, sometimes we go through some things. And when we don't realize who it is that brought us through some things, we can get prideful. As if we can't be touched, as if we got it like that. And God said, the reason why I brought you through the wilderness, because even though you were in captivity, you ain't got an air of arrogance about yourself. And so now I need to humble you through this journey. <laughs> Listen. I, I, I was raised in the projects. I was a project kid. And 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 we didn't have nothing. We didn't have nothing to brag about. But we we walked around with a swag like we own the world. And we expected people to recognize who we was. We ain't have nothing. We ain't have nothing. And so so when I got to the place where God began to minister to my life and to my heart, God had to first humble my arrogance about who I was. Because with nothing, I thought I was somebody and God was, was showing me that, that, it, that you, you, I need this, you to see who you really are, who you really are, and who you really are. Now watch this, he says, he says, thou shall remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee, to test you, to know what is really in your heart. <laughs> Y'all here this morning? So listen, listen, to test you, to know well, listen, there is nothing that will show the true character of a person like adversity. There is nothing that will show the true character of a person like a wilderness journey. Listen, I don't care how you dress up for church. I don't care how good you look. I don't care what kind of clothes you got on. When, when somebody catches you at a time where the pressure is on, they will see who you really are. Come on, some of us, some of us didn't even say that. Don't make me, don't make me hang, don't listen, don't, I can put this Bible down and, and I can show you who I really am. <laughs> don't, 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 don't think, don't think just because I got this Bible, there's something soft about me. I'll show you. 
And so God said the wilderness journey, the, I brought it through to test you and to see the character. Listen, you have a, we, we've all been through it. The, something happens and it, it puts you at a tip either with a friend or, or a loved one. And, and then in the moment, you blurt out something. And and, and 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 it and it wounds and it hurts. And then here's the kicker. Then later on, when you realize the damage that you have done, you go back and say, you know what, I'm sorry. I, I you, you know that ain't me. But guess what? That was the first time that you showed up. That was the first time that the character of who you are really showed up. See, because when, when adversity comes, it brings forth the innermost being of a person. And you will see <laughs> who they really are. So the wilderness journey brought forth the character of the people. And so now God was able to deliver and not only to deliver, but heal them before they went in to possess the land. Now watch, he says, he said, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments. He said, to know what is in thy heart, to prove thee to know what is in thy heart, what, what, whether you would do what God told you to do. See, see, we 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 we've been on the we've been on the fake it till we make it list too long. And 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 some of us ain't got no poker face. You know, because I used to, you know, I, I sit sometime and I just watch as people come into the house of God. Listen, and, and, and I remember the club. I even remember uh the, the trap house. I remember the houses of ill repute. I remember those different places that were that were not godly or not godly sanctioned. And I remember the people coming in and I remember the expressions on their face coming into those places was more joyous than the expression on the faces of so-called Christians who come into the house of God. I'm gonna give y'all a minute for somebody to say either amen or ouch. And so, and so, and so the, 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 the reality, you know, we can cover it up for so long, but why do you want to cover up when you can be transformed? Verse three, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. See, that's some of our problems. Some of our problem is that we ain't hungry no more. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Some of us need to get back to a place where we was hungry. Where we was hungry. See, because, be, listen, I've been hungry both physically and spiritually. And it's not a good place. But hunger, hunger makes you put things in their proper equation and what is important and what's not. Ooh. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me this morning, huh? All right, all right, I see you, Sister Mary. All right, all right, so he said, suffer thee to be hungry and fed the manna. Listen, listen. The even the hunger that God allowed in the wilderness journey had nothing to do with some sadistic God who just want to put you through some pain. There was disease and pestilence all around them with the nations that were out in the wilderness. And God wanted to preserve his people and keep them from going through the disease and the pestilence that was plaguing these heathen nations. And so what God did, he said, listen, I, I'm going to allow you not to eat what they eat, not to partake of what they partake of, 
so that you can live. And in the meantime, I'm going to supply your daily bread. Uh, and when God supplied the daily bread, the people looked at it and said, what is it? That's what manna means. What is it? You brought us out here in the wilderness to die. We, we had onions and, 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 and leeks in Egypt. And they talked about, about what they ate in Egypt as if they had some, some major expensive cuisine. They were eating the scraps. They were eating slave food in Egypt. But they put the slave food above the food that God was giving them to sustain them and to keep them because they didn't understand that God was trying to protect them. And then, and then they got on Moses' nerves so bad that, 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 that God told Moses, he said, Said, just, just, just stand back. Let me handle things for a minute. And and he uh, he allowed the quail to come in because they were talking about we want some eat, some meat. We tired of this manner. And the quail came in, and they had quail everywhere. And and the Bible said before they could pick the meat out of their teeth, the plague was upon them. Be careful what you ask for. You might get it. Sometimes God allows us to go through a position of hunger to protect us. We don't need to partake in anything that looks like sustenance. But allow God to sustain us with the reality of who he is. He says, and he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. Priority. That's all I'm saying. Priorities. The priorities, the things that we put ahead or instead of God. And sometimes the priority that we put in God, in front of God, and the word of God, and the sustenance of God happens to be the very thing that God is trying to save, the very thing that God is trying to protect. Listen, we're going to get ready. I'm, I'm going to pause right there. We, 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 we're not going to stop. I'm going to pause right there. And we're, and we're going to come back in the morning and we're going to complete this because I, I want to give you the full force of what we're, what we're talking about. But here's, here's the thing. Listen, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. You, you got receipts. You, 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 you've been through some things. God has delivered you and is still delivering you. But guess what? He delivered you for a purpose. And there's some people around you. Look at the, look when you go the next time you're sitting in your congregation and look at the youth around you. And, and, and even the ones who, 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 who we, we've given up on. And the reason is because we have not shared. We ain't showed them our receipts. Listen, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get here just because I was good. I got here because I've been. Listen, I know a few things because I've seen a few things. I've been through a few things. Yea, though I walk through, I need to hear some, some, some going through people. Some of the people who have been through some things. Some of the people who know that the the reason why they're here is because God brought them through some stuff. I got some scars. I got some wounds. I I got some dispositions and some and some emotional scars. I got some things going on me, but I have made it through to another day of living and another day of life. And the reason that I'm here is not because I was so good, it's because I was so bad and God showed compassion upon little old me. Jesus said, I came to seek and save 
those who are lost. He told the Pharisees, he said, yeah, you know, the, 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 if you're not sick, you don't need a physician. I came for those that were sick. I came to heal those that are sick. You don't need a doctor if you're not sick. And some of us running around, walking around after all this time and all of what God has brought us through, acting like we ain't never been sick. While our children are suffering from the same ailment that almost killed us. But we won't tell them that we were there because we want them to have this grandiose image of who we are. And we think that they'll think less of us if we tell them where we really came from. But that's why you came from it. That's why you went through it. So God could use what you've been through to help somebody who is going through right now as we speak. Listen, we're going to pause. May God bless you. May God keep you. May his Holy Spirit forever shine upon you as we pray. I pray that God would just strengthen us. I pray that God would just uh, uh, reveal unto us, open the eyes and ears of our understanding that we will, that we would be, uh, understand that our salvation was not simply for us. Our deliverance was not simply for us. All of what we went through, God allowed it and kept us and blessed us so that we could be a blessing to someone else. <sighs> Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We we praise you. We lift you up. We glorify your name for this time, this moment, a, a moment such as this, God, where you would minister to our hearts and our life and remind us, oh God, where you brought us from and the purpose that you brought us here for this day, for this time, another day on the wake up list. Lord, not just so that we could relish in our own safety, but now that we're safe, we can help deliver someone who is in the same danger zone that you brought us out of. My God, my God, we thank you, dear Lord, that now you brought us even to a place where you have transferred us from where we were looking at the elders and now we have become those who others are looking at. And sometimes, oh God, Sometimes, even in your word, we read some, some things, some, some drastic things, some, some things of, of tragedy and travesty that, that your children have gone through. And, and sometimes it's uncomfortable, you, but you never, you never leave us with the notion that this is how it ends. You let us know that even through those things, that you are great and powerful. And sometimes we will be the only book that someone will read and we need to let them know that there is a good end to the tragedy or the travesty or the or the situation that they are in oh god father we pray for healing we pray for deliverance we pray for those dear lord that that bishop has on the prayer list you know, name by name, situation by situation. Oh, God, I, I, I don't have the list to call every name, but God, you know who they are. And Father, we thank you for them. And we thank you, God, that you're still ministering. We thank you, oh, God, for the receipts, for the wounds that we still have that remind us of the hand of your deliverance on our lives. And how not only have you delivered, you are still delivering us. Oh, yeah, we, should, we have a few aches and we have a few pains. But, but, God, we don't look like what we've been through. And, God, we thank you for that. Now, God, teach us. Teach us, dear Lord. Teach us, dear Lord, to, to open our mouth with the word of our testimony that someone will know. That where they are is not hopeless. It's just a wilderness journey. It's just a, 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 a walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Hmm. 
But David said, I will feel no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And so we know that there's a comfort, but there is a journey. There is a wilderness. There are some scars and there are some wounds. But praise be to God that even those will heal. Father, we thank you. We bless you. And we glorify your name in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. And may his Holy Spirit forever shine upon you is my prayer. See you in the morning. We'll continue with this. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you. Amen. 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 Ba -da -ba 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 -da. Thank <laughs> you.